close it up when ready. Now that's a nice ass. <laughs> I was gonna say, look, Phil's behind me. <laughs> I right, try it. Go ahead, you can. I we both had their own <laughs> ideas. I was like, dang it. I right, started. Go ahead, try it. The ass is the star of the show. You. <laughs> we are doing something we haven't done in a very long time. Hanging out with a bunch of asses. No, I hang out with you all the time. <laughs> I can keep these jokes going forever. I we have like one. fifteen of these. <laughs> I teed that one up for you. That it was, was a almost. Good one. <laughs> That was true. It's very true. Now, yeah. we are at a harvest host, and it's a dairy farm and a petting zoo. Yeah, it's pretty cool. They've got, uh, you see the, the miniature donkeys behind us. You can obviously hear the chickens, but they've got goats. They've got either alpacas or llamas, and they've got a kangaroo, which yes. is pretty cool. Yeah, so hopefully in the morning before we leave, we'll be able to go over and check it out a little closer. The petting zoo closed at 5. In case you missed last week's video, we spent the last two weeks working, volunteering, really, with... Ooh, well, hello there. I hope they don't bite. <laughs> it's a little close. <laughs> Hold on, let me, let me show I you. Have no, I have no snacks for him. Yeah. He just came and leaned. <laughs> leaned into us. He came and leaned right up next to us on the fence. What's up there, little fella? So we just went two weeks volunteering with the Year to Volunteer, and we had electric only. So we, when we left there, we went straight to a campground so we could do laundry, clean everything up, dump, fill, all that good stuff. And we found the campground. Not dump, fill, but dump and fill. You know, whatever. You you guys decide how that really should be. <laughs> so so we actually hit up a campground right off the 10. It's an escapees campground, and it's nice, level, and flat. And because we're members, it's only 21 bucks a night. Yeah, and if you're not an escapees member, I think it was 26 bucks. Yeah. So still not bad, and it was right off the 10. Easy peasy to get in and out of. Do you remember the name of it? Dreamcatcher RV Park. Yes. In Deming, New Mexico. It was a perfect stop. We left there this morning and came straight here. So we are going to slow roll it to our next destination, which is taking Phil back to school. Yeah, and um, this guy is just hanging He's like out. cuddling up with Phil. I mean, look, yeah. hop down, show. Yeah. What's up, fella? Where's he at? I can't see him. Up, dude? He's Good like job. all but cuddled up with Phil. Maybe Phil smells good or bad or something. But you know, us asses hang out with each other. Phil was a little disappointed when he found out they don't make their own homemade ice cream here. But they do make homemade cheese and butter. So we did pick up some of that before they closed today. And of course, Phil picked up just some regular old ice cream from the freezer. Today, we are headed to a Cracker Barrel. We are still traveling east, taking Phil to school. Yeah, and we had Ooh, the, that wind is bad. Yeah, so I'm going to try to hold this camera steady with one hand, but the wind is whipping. Uh, we stayed here at the Cracker Barrel overnight uh, because, you know, I like to fuel up in the morning. And I'm talking biscuits and gravy fueling up. <laughs> so it's always a good stop. But this is the first Cracker Barrel that we've been to that we actually had to unhook the Jeep to pull in. So there's the Jeep in front of the Ruby. Yeah, so... We weren't sure if we were actually going to stay here last night because of that. No, I know it only takes like 10 or 15 minutes to unhook the Jeep, but we were like, should we stay? What should we do? And we decided to go ahead and stay. Yeah. So one of the things that I've, I've just kind of picked up along the way is I know when the Jeep is hooked up that I have to have at least eight or nine parking spots to park long ways in a parking lot, if you will. Walmart, Cracker Barrel, whatever. Yeah. And this one only had seven. So I knew... Uh, that I wasn't going to fit because one, I can't back up with the Jeep on the back of the rig. So that's problematic right there. So we ended up taking it off and I did have to do some um, maneuvering to get in the site because on the other side, there's trees that stick out about halfway into the parking spaces. So we had to fight that as well. But we, made, we managed to make it work. And I know there are questions out there because we get it all the time about why we can't back up. We can't back up with our toe arms because you could bend the arms and you could also mess mess up the front of the car um, because it can kind of jackknife or whatever. So that's why you don't back up with um, toe arms if you're flat toe. Yeah, and there's people that do it and, you know, good on them for figuring out how to do it without bending the but toe. But it is not recommended. Yeah, it's not recommended. And I'm not a risk taker, especially with when you're spending that kind of money on, on your setups and whatnot. I could probably back up a couple feet if it was straight. But again, I'm not willing to risk the biscuit. Well, biscuits and gravy I am, but not that.
We went on the road for about 45 minutes and I have been in a wrestling match with Ruby here and I seem to be losing. It is so windy outside right now. We're getting gusts of about 45 miles an hour and it's coming from the driver's side. It's smacking us. So we have 35 feet of sail right now. We pulled off in a rest stop so that I could look at my windy app, which shows you wind speed, wind direction, gusts, all of that. So I'm just trying to figure out if I'm gonna be in a fight with the wind all day. It has been seriously windy to where we've almost had brownouts from all the dust going across the interstate. And you probably see me swaying right now. That's the wind. We are getting 19 knots of wind with gusts up to 34 here. This windy app is pretty good at, at letting me know the intervals, the wind, the direction, the, the gusts, all of that. So if you're interested in that portion of your weather tracking features, try the windy app. Um, I've been using it for years, even before we started RVing. Is it a freebie or do you have to pay for it? Uh, you know it's a freebie. I don't pay for apps. My big fear is just catching a big gust of wind somewhere and big rigs topple over all the time. We're probably lighter than those guys. We come in at a svelte 29,000 pounds, Ruby does. Svelte? Yeah. So, um, and we don't have full tanks. We don't have full water. We got three quarters fuel. So we're not as heavy as we would normally be, um, I guess, traveling down the interstate. So we're going we're gonna to catch our breath and then jump back at it. And hopefully we make it a little further than 45 minutes before we stop. I, I can tell that I'm, I'm gripping the hell out of this wheel. Okay, I will, uh... They're I, open, actually, they're open today till 7 p.m. Okay. But they are closed tomorrow. Gotcha. All right, I've got to pass by there, so I will, uh... I'll do the reset like you said, see how that works, and then um, we'll go from there. All right, buddy. Good luck. Hope you have work. <laughs> All right, appreciate it, Barry. You Thank you. Sometimes. All righty. Bye. It's not looking good for the home team. I've heard about this. I know. You've been talking about it for a while. <sighs> And we're full of deaf. I don't. I don't understand why today. So it, they say it's those sensors. They just. I mean, it's five years, and now they're having problems getting those sensors. We were on the road for about I don't know, ten minutes, fifteen minutes, yeah. um, headed toward the schoolhouse, um, and we had a sensor light turn on, and it's the deaf sensor. So it's a little nerve wracking because the deaf sensor can actually shut you down and we can't drive. So we had a three hour drive today. So Phil just got off the phone with Freightliner um, and you heard what they said. And now you're gonna call Cummins? No, I'm gonna call the, Fort, the uh, Freightliner dealer in Fort Worth. That's where we're headed um, and see what they say. It's an hour and 20 minutes away. Oh, that's, that's not as bad as three hours. No, but I don't know if we can drive to get there though. That's my thing. So I'm gonna to try to call them and ask them the same thing and see what they say. Oh, yeah, I'm in a 2016 Tiffin rear engine diesel RV and I had a low def pressure sensor pop on. Um, what can you tell me about that and if, if, if I'm safe to drive uh, and or how to clear it? If you're, gonna, if you're having low def pressure issues, you're, you're probably gonna end up uh, what we call derated meaning uh, your engine's gonna go into a protection mode and it's not gonna let you drive over 55 miles an hour. Okay. More than likely you have a, a DEF pump that's, that's starting to fail. Um, and honestly, we can, we can get that done for you, no problem. Um, problem lies in getting the parts here. We've been having little issues, um, you know, getting, getting DEF pumps and things like that in here. Dang it, there's no... Yeah. I'm about an hour and a half out from you. Um, I'm west of you guys right now. Um, so even if I brought it to you, you wouldn't be able to fix it without, because you don't have the parts. I'm not sure if we have the parts. Um, we may. I just know that's one that we've been having issues um, tracking down. Okay. <sighs> Do they have and, availability? Can we come yeah, in today? Is there, is there, if I come in today, will you be able to take a peek at it and let me know for sure? Um, I could probably get a technician to hook up to it um, and do the diagnostic portion. Okay. Uh, and if we have parts, we could probably get it out of here today. But like I said, it's just one of those deals. I'm not, you know, I'm not sure if we'll have it. Gotcha. And I don't want to sit here and lie to you. you know what yeah. I mean? No. No. I appreciate that. And it, so, is there a way to um, kind of reset it? Is there a way to try to reset that um, sensor, like? 
turning the batteries, the chassis batteries off. Just you know. Yeah, you can you can try that. Um, some, sometimes disconnecting the batteries completely. You know, take a, a nine sixteenth wrench and take the battery terminals completely off, and let it sit for about a minute or two, and it'll all stuff back up. Sometimes that'll work, um, but if you have an issue, it's going to come back fairly quickly. Okay, but if I so. I can drive it. It'll just it'll just um, keep me at fifty five. So so, so this, this is this is kind of the difficult part. Sometimes you can drive on that check engine light for months and never have an issue. Sometimes you can drive on that sucker for five minutes and it throws you the D rate. It's kind of a uh, you know. Gotcha. No real I was dry. I drove about back. ten miles. Can you um, drive on a D rate? Before yeah. I I pulled over, or I could pull over. So. Right. Um, now, how will I know I'm in the, the D rating, as you're talking about? Uh, It'll so just... Right now, what, you have a, uh, just the amber light on your dash? Yeah, the amber engine light, and it says low, low, low def. def. Yeah, it says low def, but I'm full of def. I just filled up the other day. Yeah, um, so when you, most, most of the time when it starts to get into D rate, you'll have another check engine light comes on it'll be an amber one as well but it'll say check through the middle of it okay and that, that's not always gonna throw you in d-ray but but if you if you are d-ray that light will definitely be on and when that does happen i am still safe to drive it just i can't go over 55 it'll keep me at 55 or below yeah exactly yes sir okay all right well yeah, i'm gonna get real, real bad if, if it keeps getting ignored it'll end up kicking you down to five miles an hour <laughs> Oh yeah, I can't do that. Um, and, all, and all this deal is just keeping itself from tearing yeah. anything else up. Gotcha. So we got to get it addressed somehow, but I'm going to try and do what he said and um, disconnect the batteries. See if that at least gives us a break until we can get to him. Yeah. We waited about 20 minutes or so after we disconnected the uh, chassis batteries, took the terminals off the battery itself. I just reconnected them. Fingers crossed this clears it um, and keeps it clear. Nervous. Yeah. I just hope it starts. Yeah, it's still there. The check engine light's on, but I'm not getting the low def on uh, the dash. So what I'm going to do is run out and check the... the, the the def tank itself, because there was a red light on that, and see if okay. it cleared that. Okay. This had a red light on it when I checked it previous, and now the red light's gone, so it's cleared that. We just punched in the address for Freightliner in yep. Fort Worth, so that's gonna be our next stop. Hopefully, they can run a test and figure out what they're doing, and we can actually make it all the way to the schoolhouse. Well, hopefully we make it to Freightliner first. So <laughs> let's yeah. do first things first. Even though it's cleared, the guy said it can clear and come right back on in five minutes or never come back on again. So we just don't know what's going to happen. They will hook up their diagnostic, the computer to it, see what it is. So how do I clear the check engine light? We can clear them right now. They're all inactive, meaning by the time that you disconnected your battery since you brought it here, it never, it never saw a parameter hookup to make it set. Okay. How many miles did you drive from here before since we talked to you? Um, probably. I don't know. It was an hour 50, and a half. Between 50 and 70 miles, somewhere around there. So if you drove that far and it never came back active, I would say that you probably risking for a little while longer. We have a fault code. Um, Shocker. It is the diesel exhaust fluid dosing unit voltage below normal so it could you know they said it could be a, a multitude of things um could be a loose connection it could just be bad wiring could have been air in the line yeah so, so. it's kind of vague they would they would know more once they they got it in and, and did their their other checks once they you know dialed it into that so um they were able so we cleared the code when we disconnected the battery yes. so that code didn't come back um, and we drove about an hour and a half. Oh, we drove another ninety some miles. Yeah. After so we, we drove. It. Yeah. So we went ninety miles, and it didn't return. And normally, according to the guys on the phone and these guys, if there's a problem, it will come right back. Yeah. So our check engine light did stay on, um, but they said there was no code. There was nothing um, at, at the towards the engine, I should say. Um, so they cleared that code. 
Um, and now look, I have it. I got, I need an oil change. So, but they couldn't get in to do the oil change because they have limited guys on the weekend working. So, but that's on the to-do list. We can get that done. Yeah. That's not emergent. Going to no. make us stop on the side of the road. No, no. So we're good. And now I think, um, now we have to get to Athens, <laughs> Texas, which is 105 miles. Ah, um, easy day. And, uh, it's about, um, an hour and 44 minutes. Yeah. So, Cross your fingers that we stay in the clear, because if we do, I would assume, of course I'm assuming, that it was just a, a, a bleep and it's not anything we need yeah. to get done immediately. Yeah, so um, I tell you what, the guys here at uh, Freightliner Fort Worth, um, they were super friendly, super nice, uh, came out, you know, right away, uh, you know, trying to try to figure it out for us. So um, if you're in the Fort Worth area and need some Freightliner support, ask for... Reed, he was a Reed. service I was going to say Reed, but I'm like, ooh, what if I'm wrong? Yeah, and they are uh, first come, first serve basis here, so there's no appointment. So yeah. if you get here earlier in the day, better chance you are, you'll have to get out the same day. All right, let's book it. It's getting hot in here. Yeah. This, did you say that they didn't charge us anything to die for diagnostic they for the not. diagnostics? So which is really nice. Yeah, no, and I even went in uh, or started to go in to settle up, and they said, no, no biggie there, you know, just glad to be able to help us in, out. And I told them, you know, they gave us peace of mind. It, you know, now we know what we're dealing with. One of the things you can do to make sure that your DEF pump continues to operate like it's supposed to is never run out of DEF. Keep your DEF tank at least halfway full. Thankfully, the DEF sensor error code never came back. We've driven quite a few hundred miles since the original sensor light came on the dash and like Freightliner said it may never come back and so far it has not come back.